Alrighty, so here is where we connect back to those identities. So solve by rewriting expressions. Of course, I'm showing you some of our easiest expressions, and we're going to kind of focus on the Pythagorean identity. But now that you know how to verify and simplify trig, at any point, if you're given especially multiple trigs in one question, the smartest thing to do is simplify and rewrite it so it looks like one or factored one trigs, right? So you need to get it down so you can separate and set equal to zero or set equal to a single value number. So here we have sine squared minus sine plus one is equal to cosine squared. Well, because I have two different trigs, I know I've got to do some sort of manipulation. Is it factorable? No, not the way it is, okay? Um, is it, can I change them all into one trig? Hmm. That might be my next answer, right? So what do I recognize? Because it's squared, I recognize a Pythagorean identity. So if I move everything to one side, so I have that zero on the right-hand side, I can now see, hey, I have some Pythagorean identities. I didn't get lucky enough that this was plus, so that this would just become one, right? Because the, the original Pythagorean identity looks like this. So I didn't get lucky enough to do that. However, I can still replace. So I can take this identity or just this identity and replace it with its Pythagorean property. Well, if I change sine squared into cosine squared, that didn't really help me because then I would still have cosine and sine. But if I change cosine squared into sine squared, that does help me. So how do I do that? Well, I want to isolate this in my identity. So I would subtract sine from both sides. And now I see that this is equivalent to this entire statement. So I can plug this buddy in right here. And that's exactly what I do. I just rearranged it just to um, help us see what we were doing because I want to make sure that the second common mistake doesn't occur. Ooh, there shouldn't be, uh, I haven't replaced it yet, have I? All I did was move it around. This is what we're going to replace. I just showed you that. There we go. This is what kids make a mistake and fail to do. They fail to distribute that negative all the way across. They might distribute it to the one, but fail to distribute it here or vice versa. So please don't make that mistake. So I've distributed. Now, because I've distributed, I recognize that my negative one and my one will cancel out, but my sine squared and sine squared come together to become two sine squareds. Now I have repeating factors. I have a greatest common factor. So I rip that guy out and do my division appropriately. Now I have factors that I can set equal to zero. And just a side note, if this had magically ended up being cosine, uh, because this was, I don't know, sine cos minus sine or something like that. If this had ended up being cosine, you might say that's still true trig identities. But the reality of it is, is they're in their own factor. They're in their own multiplication. So it's okay that there are two different factors, but they have to be separate. And that's all right. All right. So now I separate them, finish the solve on the right-hand side, and because I have sine of x is equal to a number, trig equal to a number, I can finish the solve for x by inverting them. And now I use my tricks, and I found these answers. I've already rejected uh, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 because we are looking for positive 1 half. With our 0, there is no rejection because 0 just occurs at 0 and pi for sine. So then I double check, are my answers inside my period? We're good to go. I should have tacked on a plus 2 pi n. Okay, and, and that's really, we are trying to answer in this interval, but I want y'all to recognize that there is a concept here that, you know, you have a repeating tr sign, right? It's a continuous wave. And so even though in zero to two pi, these are the answers, so are these answers, so are these answers. So I want you to recognize that concept that it's a repeating answer. All right, here's my second one. So again, two different tricks. And I see an identity. Because I see the Pythagorean identity, why not change it over? So I'm going to move everything to one side. So I moved everything from the right to the left-hand side. Doesn't matter which way you go. Now I want to convert my identity. And here's the work for converting it. So now I know that sine squared can be changed to 1 minus cosine squared. I distribute that 2. And now I can take the 2 minus 1 and turn that into positive 1. If I, re if I rearrange that, I can factor it. Really, it's not a factor. You guys call this, um, or it is a factor, but you, it's the factor of a 
factorable trinomial. And so if it helped you out, you could have, you know, rearranged this. And that's what I'm about to do. But I'm going to rearrange it with cosine being a variable. Some of you can already factor this and I don't you don't need to do this. For those of you who need this information, this is for you. So I moved everything over. I don't like dealing with a negative two in front of my highest power. So I moved everything to the right hand side and switched sides so that I can factor it. That's it. You didn't have to do it this way. That's just a personal choice I make. And then I plug in my cosine back. So there's my cosine. Now I have two, fact, uh, two factors that I can set equal to zero. So I do it. I finish. I finish. I finish. And almost there. All right. So now I have my trig from my number. I can invert it. And then I use my inverses to finish this off. I use the hand trick and I got these answers. We For uh, one half, we rejected two pi over three and four pi over three because we were only looking for positive quadrants. For negative one, we had to reject um, the positive one answer. Really, that's what we did. We rejected zero. Okay, since it has this period of zero to two pi, all of my values fall in there. And then I tack on plus two pi n just because you're accounting for all possible repetitions or subtraction repetitions as well. Alrighty, here's your opportunity.